Hello, I'm Tim from Stonebank Games, and welcome to episode 2 of my game dev experiments. Today I'm going to try to recreate the lovely dappled lighting effect from the East Forest level in Tunic because I thought it looked really cool, and I was curious to see how it could be done. This game was made with Unity, but started development well before the introduction of the new scriptable render pipelines, so I'm going to show you a way that we could recreate the lighting effect in both the original built-in renderer, but also the more recent Universal Render Pipeline, or URP. There are some subtle differences between the two, so I'll point out what needs to be done differently, and also what the limitations are. I'm using Unity 2021.3 for this, which is the current long-term support version at the time of recording, so bear in mind that some features I mentioned later may not be available in earlier versions of Unity. So what I'm going to do today is take a very basic scene which I've mocked up using ProBuilder and ProGrids and convert it into this lovely lit up scene here. Okay, so to start with, here's what I've got set up in my package manager. ProGrids and ProBuilder were used to build the mock-up level. The universal render pipeline is what we'll be using later and we need the post-processing for the current version of the built-in render pipeline as well. Okay, so with that set up, let's take a look at our basic scene that we're going to start with. I used ProBuilder and ProGrids to build up this uh, basic area here and I used uh, Blender to create these little uh, grass objects because it was too complicated to do with ProBuilder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just take you step by step through all the processes of converting this into the lovely lit up scene that we saw in the opening sequence. The first thing I'm going to do is replace the default material with some slightly nice ones. I'll do that real quick now. Okay, with that done, let's change the lighting slightly. I'm going to go up to the lighting tab here, go to environment and change it from skybox to color. And I'm also going to set up the color to be a little bit more interesting. So this color I've set up previously here. The next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of post-processing. I've already created a post-processing game object, but what we need to do is add a post-processing volume to it. I'm also going to set this to be global so that it shows up everywhere and then I'll create a new profile so that we can save our settings. And I'm going to add a couple of effects here, ambient occlusion and a little bit of bloom as well. Now I'm going to turn these on but you won't see anything happen immediately because we haven't set the camera up properly yet. I'll also need to set up the layer to be post-processing here which is something I set previously. So let's go to our camera and now add a post-process layer. And we're going to set the layer here to post-processing. And while we're here, let's add a little bit of anti-aliasing. So let's set up the settings for the ambient occlusion. Set the intensity to one. Leave the thickness modifier as it is, and we'll leave the color as black. And for the bloom, let's set the intensity to 5 and we'll set the threshold to be 1.1. Okay, we're starting to get there. So at the moment, I've just got a simple directional light set lighting up the scene. There's nothing exciting about this. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to turn on this directional light here. Now you can see we've immediately got this lovely dappled lighting effect, but there's a few things that you need to note. Firstly, I've changed the color of the light to be a lovely sort of uh, pale yellow here. I've set the mode to real time and the intensity to two. I've also set up a cookie, which is what gives it this uh, dappled lighting effect. So a light cookie is just a texture that you can apply to a light, any type of light. I found this nice one on the internet from this chap here. So I took the basic texture and I've made a few adjustments and ultimately ended up with this. And the other thing you've got to note here that you've got to set the set the texture type to cookie and the alpha source from grayscale that's very important and all you do is you assign it to the cookie slot in the light here and i've just set the size to 20 but you can see if you change that you can vary the density of the speckles let's set that back to 20. So in and of itself, this will just give you a nice sort of static lighting effect. So to give the light a little bit of motion, I've just set up this script here. I won't go into too many details about how this script works, but it basically samples from an animation curve and moves the light backwards and forwards along that curve over a cycle. 
So I've got separate properties for both the x and the z directions here. It shows y here because uh, this is a vector 2, but really it's moving the light in, the, in both the x direction and the z direction. And it does that using a couple of different animation curves. And I've just set up a couple of wiggles here so that the light moves in an interesting shape. You can do whatever you like for your own purposes here. I've also got a couple of extra properties here to control the size of the motion in both the x and the z direction and also where on the curve we start the cycle. So let's see what that looks like. So I think we're getting pretty close here. We've got this lovely lighting effect and the dappled light is shifting backwards and forwards in a sort of interesting cycle. But what if we wanted to add something a little bit more interesting? Well okay I've got a second light here and I'll turn that on. Let's just disable the first light real quick. So this second light is very similar to the first except the intensity is a little bit lower and the size of the cookie is now down at 10 rather than 20. I've got the same light motion script attached to this but with some slightly different cycles, some slightly different magnitudes and a little bit of a difference in the curves here as well. So let's see what this light looks like. So this is a much more subtle effect as you can see. But let's see what happens when we layer these two together. Now that's looking much more interesting and I think it's looking pretty good now. Okay, so that's great for the built-in render pipeline, but what if we were using the universal render pipeline? Let's change scenes and see what we've got. Well, the first thing we need to do is set up the renderer itself. So let's create a new renderer. URP asset with universal renderer. And then go up to our project settings and set that up. Click continue. Okay, so here we go with our basic scene. Okay, so we'll need to set up a few things on our asset here. Need to make sure that we've got cast shadows for our main light. Let's change the max shadow distance to 100. And while we're here, let's also click soft shadows. And let's also change the anti-aliasing and let's stick it at eight times. So once again, let's change the default materials to something a little bit more interesting. Okay, great, that's all done. Let's also change our lighting again, like we did before. Change it to color, and let's change the color to something a little bit more interesting. Once again, let's add a little bit of post-processing. Now it's done slightly differently in the universal render pipeline. So we need to search for volume. Set the mode to global. And again, we need a profile. So let's click new. Let's add some bloom. Set the threshold to 1.1. And the intensity to 5, like we did before. So ambient occlusion is set up slightly differently in the universal render pipeline. So let's go to the asset and find the renderer and then add render feature, screen space, ambient occlusion. Let's set the intensity to one and the radius to 0.5. Okay, so now let's add our dappled lighting. I'll turn off our main directional light and I'll turn on our first dappled lighting light. This is exactly the same as before with the same script with the light motion and everything works exactly as it did before. However, we've now got a problem. If I turn on our second directional light, you can see it doesn't quite look the way it did before. The reason is that although the universal render pipeline does support multiple directional lights, it actually only supports shadowing for one at a time, which means we can't use light cookies on a second directional light. So let's turn off our second directional light for now. And in fact, let's turn off the first directional light as well. In the universal render pipeline, we have to do things slightly differently because we can only use a single directional light. So let me turn on this third one that I've got set up here. Now you can see that the light cookie I've got here is actually a custom render texture. And what we do is we actually layer on the two different textures that we've got for our dappled lighting onto the same render texture. And we apply that render texture to the light itself. The way we create a custom render texture is to right click, go create, custom render texture. And we can set up these settings so that they're a little bit more appropriate for our purposes. 
make sure the wrap mode is repeat and also that the update mode is real time. The next thing we need to do is assign a material to this render texture. I've already created one here called light cookie material. Now this light cookie material has a custom render texture shader assigned to it. To create the shader that updates this material, we just go down here again, right click, create, shader, custom render texture. Now when you do that, that creates a special shader that helps you update the render texture. Here's one that I created earlier that allows me to layer two textures on top of each other onto a single light cookie. Once again, I'm not gonna go into the details, but you can see what I've written here and you can recreate it for yourself if you like. So we're nearly there, we just need to add one more thing, and that's a script, much like our light motion script earlier, but this time I've called it light cookie motion. This does something very similar to our light motion script, except this time we're updating the light cookie using that special shader from before. And here's what the script looks like. We're doing something very similar to the light motion script, except this time we're using the scripts to update the shader itself, which then updates the light cookie material. I've used the same sort of curves here as I did before. So one thing you've got to be a little bit careful about is that the settings are going to be slightly different to our light motion script, because instead of moving the light around, we're now moving the UVs of the textures instead. So let's see what that looks like now. So I think we're pretty much there again, except this time we're only using a single directional light. That's it for my second game dev experiment. I hope you enjoyed watching this and got something useful from it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.